the seahorse rears to oblivion. When God created the worlds, they were before then without form, and were void except in his own great eye which had already seen everything that was, is, and will. The first thing he created, I believe, though the Bible does not tell us so, is children's crying, as this is still mirrored when children are born, though no doubt all the animals weep for birth in their own particular way. But they must have someone human to notice it so it can be noted. The second things he created was two things simultaneously to frighten children. An old rocking horse that moves of its own accord, and a discoloured doll which seems to move occasionally. The third things he did was to throw Lucifer out of heaven, so he would be waiting on earth to destroy everything that people try to do and to destroy what little happiness they scurry together. And he became Satan and waits here still for all of us. That is three things too. Lucifer to Satan, destroying to do and to enjoy. The fourth things he did was to laugh once, twice, thrice and forth. The fifth things was to create one star, one animal, one fish, one bird, one human. These five bred together to create the entire moving, flying, spinning world and what is in it. The stars he sent to fly and lie in space. The animal he made to be our base nature and our state of nature and our innocence and our memento mori on earth. The fish went to swim and drink the waters of the sea world. The bird flies, dies and falls. The human lies, dies, destroys, creates and seeks the stars that he sent up in space. The stars try and try and try to fly away from Earth, but God has caught them in a large sling that holds them from falling too near or flying too far. The devil creates black holes and sucks them out of the visible universe to create decorations, baubles and globes full of light and darkness in the ceiling sky of hell, upside down if you could see it standing up. Then God decides that it is time to blow the final trumpet and call all chickens home to roost in every way and meaning. God then blows final trumpet and withdraws the sling from the sky. The sling is made of wire and wool and warp and weft and is webbed together. And roost begins. The stars are withdrawn from the heavenly holder and attempt to rush away from the stinking world and Satan simultaneously tries to snatch all of them at once to bauble his infernal kingdom, itself now doomed to his unknowledge. The stars are taken half by Satan, dragged through an ever-increasing black rent in the night sky. The other half run towards the Pleiades and Aldebaran. O oh, stars of the evening, how swift you rush and roar away. Even Satan in his great power and great fury and great greed cannot stop them, so eager are they to dance in different ways. But God knows all, sees all, and is prepared for all. He creates a huge net made of spit and throws it further than the furthest star. The stars are caught on spit, like the birds to the lime-covered branch. Damned. God lectures them with a whip. The spit shivers as the whip quivers over the stars, 
The voice slavers and lavers them with more of the same spit that has caught them forever and ever and ever. The stars only cause and the stars only courses to obey he who made them. The stars are given great scars with the whip for attempting to flee. The scars are blood courses for the liquid proof of God's anger which pours from them. The bauble stars are brought back by a stream of spit which cuts through the web between the worlds. They too are slashed and thrashed. The stars are ordered by God to return to the sling orbit to watch his mercy rain down like rain on the earth. And all of those who are unfortunate enough to have been born in and of it. The stars do not wish to go. They march sadly to their home.